Hello, I'm Randy Simmons. I'm the host for Eye on Arts. In today's show, we're going to be visiting the Museum of the American Quilter Society. Let's go check it out. And here we are with May Louise Zimwalt. She's the executive director of the uh, Museum of American Quilter Society. And she's going to give us a little bit of a history on the Quilting Museum. And tell us, uh, when did the Quilt Museum get started? Well, Bill and Meredith Schrader actually started the museum. They got interested in quilting. They started the AQS Quilt Show about 21 years ago and then decided they had their own personal uh, quilt collection that they had begun because of their interest in quilting. And then they decided it would be a great idea to develop a museum to house quilts in the area. So they donated their collection to the museum. So in 1991, this building was built. And it was built specifically to be um, a museum for quilts. And they wanted to really target um, quilters who are um, current as opposed to antique quilts and that sort of thing. Although we show antique quilts in our galleries all the time. Um, the real focus for our permanent collection is quilts that were made um, beginning about 1980 up to the present, and we try to keep our collection current with additional quilts each year that reflect um, the best in quilting. So that's sort of the beginning. So this year actually is our 15th anniversary, 2006. Wow, 15 years and still going strong. And still going strong, just uh, doing new and, and better things all the time. So you guys have uh, two wings, one on each side of the building, and then you have a permanent collection in the center. Uh, what happens uh, on the wings exhibits? Well, usually in one wing of the uh, museum, we'll have um, maybe contemporary quilts, a collection from an individual showing a lot of different quilts that that person made, or it could be um, two people and showing the diversity of their two quilts could be a collection that somebody, um, we had last year um, a collection of quilts about jazz, for instance, so it might be a topical collection. And then in the other gallery, we almost always have at least part of that gallery with antique quilts, either from a private collection or um, some type of a collection of antique quilts showing a variety of uh, the types of quilts that might have been made in the 1800s. And how often do the quilts rotate in the wings? The side galleries rotate every two to three months, and we don't rotate them both at the same time. So we might have um, a new exhibit uh, opening, which actually just happened. We have an exhibit now called Canada Uncovered, and that exhibit uh, just went up in the last couple of weeks, and it'll be up till July. And then the, um, the collection in the other side has been up for about a month, and it'll be going down in a, um, a little bit sooner. So we try to rotate it so there's always something new, something new to see at the museum. The quilting show at the end of April is the busiest time for the Quilt Museum and for Paducah. Uh, what happens the rest of the year? Well, in April, when the quilters are in town for the quilt show, we usually have um, eight to 10,000 visitors come through the museum at that time of year. But the museum is open year round. And over the average year, we'll have about 40,000 visitors and they come from all over the United States and foreign countries. Just in the last six months, we've had visitors from every state in the United States, in including Alaska and Hawaii, and more than 25 countries. We had visitors here just recently from the Netherlands. So it's really a, an international type of museum in that it draws visitors from everywhere. Wow, so you have a worldwide uh, visitor base, and uh, you guys also have uh, workshops that go on throughout the year. You want to tell us a little bit about those workshops? We do. We have well-known quilters who have specific techniques that they have created themselves, um, or maybe just are well-known for the particular type of stitching they do. And uh, they'll come in. We have somebody almost every month of the year uh, coming in to do a workshop. and the. Uh, quilters who come in to take those workshops come from all over the country as well. And then we also in the summer uh, have quilt camp for uh, youth. We have two different age groups, uh, the younger students and then students who maybe have um, are interested in just beginners even though they're in middle or high school. And then we have an advanced camp for students who have maybe come the last year or the year before. 
And then during the school year, we have a lot of school groups who come in and do um, tours of the museum, but as well, they have hands-on activities that they can do. So it, there's a lot of variety and a lot of things going on year-round at the museum. And you have all this information on your all's website? Right. Um, um, our website is quiltmuseum.org and um, we carry um, our exhibit schedule as well as our workshop schedule um, and other activities that are going on at the museum. So you all are celebrating the 15th anniversary of the Quilt Museum and you have some special artwork outside. Um, how about if we go take a look at that? That'd be great. We're standing outside the Quilt Museum on this very windy day uh, with uh, these statues around us and these commemorate the 15th anniversary of the Quilt Museum. Yes, that's right. We um, have statues of the Lewis and Clark Expedition that were donated by Bill and Mary Schrader, the founders of the museum. Mm -hmm. And these are wonderful statues of Meriwether Lewis and his dog Seaman, of um, William Clark over here with the map. And uh, William Clark was also the founder of Paducah after he returned from That's the right. Lewis and Clark expedition. He founded Paducah in 1827. And then he also included um, a Native American child and uh, adult man. And he put them specifically in neutral clothing so you couldn't tell what tribe. You wanted to just have those as representative of any right, Native Americans they met along the way. So we're really proud to have these statues. There'll be wonderful outdoor art for the city of Paducah to enjoy night and day. They'll be lighted at night. And um, I think the community's really gonna enjoy having these um, here. Well, I think these are beautiful. They just uh, turned out very nicely. They're life-size, too. And uh, the people, will they be able to walk around these like we're doing right now once they the will. landscape is finished? We, we will have some landscaping. They'll make them look a little nicer. And, uh, but people can feel free to, to come up and look at them. The detail on the, on the statues is really excellent. So we hope people will come up and look at them closely and enjoy them. And we can touch these, right? Yes, that's oh, right. Oh, good, good, good. <laughs> Lots of textures on here. Nice. My kids will have a blast That's right. visiting these. Well, we hope they will. Hope they'll enjoy it and also uh, go inside the museum as well. We have a, a quilt of the Lewis and Clark expedition in our part of our permanent collection. And Judy Schwinder, our um, curator, will be glad to show that to you inside the building. Great. We'd love to see that. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We're inside the Quilters Museum with the curator of collections, Judy Schwender, and what a nice segue to talk about the statues outside uh, into this quilt now. Judy, you want to tell us about this quilt that's behind us? I'd love to. This quilt is called Map Makers. It's by Cassandra Williams, and we're particularly excited that the statue outside includes the dog, Seaman, who traveled the entire uh, journey with Lewis and Clark, and the dog is depicted on the quilt. Uh, the bottom panel also is interesting in that the different types of Native American uh, houses are shown, houses, teepees, um, and I think that's just uh, something really interesting. Folks can see it right there with the quilt. If you come up along the side the, of the quilt, you'll see the river, Missouri River. They traveled up to the headwaters up in Montana, which is behind um, the blue hat and then it, onward to the Snake River and out to the coast. And it's just a fabulous depiction of their travels. There's another interesting thing about this quilt. You as an art teacher will appreciate this. The majority of quilts really don't break the picture plane of the two-dimensional quilt. And this quilt does with the perspective in the, in the houses and uh, the forest and the, the river depicted on the upper left. So you're showing a sense of depth in the quilt um, through not only overlap, but certainly through perspective. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and we have a couple of quilts in the collection that show that off really well, and I think you would like to see them now. I'd love to show them to you. Great. Well, let's go check out some of these quilts. Oh, yes. Thank well, you. That would be good. Randy, we talked about two-dimensional aspect of quilts and how some of the quilts in the collection go beyond that and break the plane of the quilt. 
In this quilt by Libby Lehman, this is called Escapade. There are many, well, there's three planes in this quilt, at least three planes. Um, the, there's large squares in the patchwork. There's a, a center square that's depicted with the patchwork here. There's an outer square, a larger square, and then there's four squares that are on point depicted here. So there are different planes depicted in the quilt. The ribbons weave in and out. And this, this is interesting because the patchwork creates the original planes, but the ribbon connects them all. And the ribbon is all done with thread, Libby's thread painting. Do you know what thread painting is? I do not know. You tell do not me. know. Well, we better tell you. This is all done on the machine. And she'll draw a line and start the ribbon and continue drawing it. Then she goes back with the second line fill and overlaps them. And then she begins filling those lines in with thread. And for want of a better word, I'm going to say she kind of scribbles it. It's free motion machine quilting. And she'll use a light value of thread on one edge and a dark value on the other edge. And then she'll use up to five different shades of thread to give you that gradation. And you as an art teacher know that gradations will give you depth. And it certainly works very well. There's, you certainly can feel like this is a three-dimensional object almost. Oh, this yeah. has got a lighter side and a shade side. Gives it a sense of depth throughout the whole piece as it entwines uh, the, the previous layers of uh, flatness that are going on in the background. Mm -hmm. they're, and they're really no longer flat. It's actually a three-dimensional painting almost. Oh, yes. It's, it, Libby's very artistic. And one of the things I do like about this is the, the lively movement that the ribbons provide for the quilt. Libby uh, has taught a workshop well, several workshops here at the museum, and she'll be back in June to teach another workshop if anyone's interested. There's information about that on our website. We have an, a, another quilt I'd like you to see that has this three-dimensional aspect. I'd love to see it. Just around the corner. Let's go. Okay. Randy, this quilt is by Allison Goss, and it's titled Ancient Directions. It was the best wall quilt in 1991, which was the year the museum opened. And one of the unusual things about this quilt is its extensive use of batiks, color wash fabrics, and e-cats, and woven plaids and stripes. And an e-cat, as seen in the two triangles uh, here, are woven from fabrics that have already been dyed in a specific pattern. So the, the, the threads are dyed in a pattern, and when they're woven together, they create the, a pattern and it's a, a, t a technique that comes from India. So it's, it's unusual, there's no flowered fabrics on this. We tend to think of quilts as being, you know, out of nice little flowered prints. And this is not done that way. But back to the perspective, if you look at this quilt, this has a lot of depth and a lot of perspective. Um, I think your students would find that this is not their grandmother's quilt and it's, uh, also one of the top 100 American quilts of the 20th century. Uh, Max has seven of those quilts in our collection and we're really delighted that this one is on that list. It's, it's an extraordinary quilt because it does uh, depict perspective and it, it's just a nice unusual use of the fabrics. It's a beautiful quilt. You almost have like a one-point perspective right here in the center where all the lines converge to one vanishing point. Oh, That's yeah. really interesting. I've noticed that the forms at the top look like clouds. So I feel like we're floating in this space and we see these, uh, in these two flat planes coming together almost like something from 2001, like the monoliths. On the, yes, the exactly. Show. And the, it's, it's just an unusual, an unusual quilt that I, I can't tell you, so many, so many classical traditional quilts really are absolutely not like this quilt. And this, this is a real nice piece for that period, for 1991. We're delighted to have it. And I think we have one just across the way that we want to check out too. Oh yes, Cabin in the Cosmos. You guys have got to see this one. On this quilt, do you notice anything that you've not seen on any quilt before? I see bits of computer board on this, some transistors, like in this area right through here especially. 
Yes, and it, this is another unusual quilt. This is by Lonnie Rossi, and the quilt is entitled Cabins in the Cosmos. And Lonnie has really done a fabulous job of creating a whole different universe. It kind of reminds me of, you know, how the Death Star looked in Star Wars. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and she's done, if you come into the, the center, you can see some of the machine stitching she's done, the satin stitch, and she's kind of built circuitry, and it comes across the quilt, and then you'll have a computer chip, and it'll come up, and it'll surround something, and it comes off in the edges, so it's got this spiky thing going on, you know, on the outside edges, um, if, which is fun, though, the computer chips. One of the students on a student tour said, is that an electric blanket? He thought maybe that, that that's what this was because of the computer chip that he saw. But it's called Cabins in the Cosmos, and if you look, you have a form like this. These are all log cabin forms, and that's a traditional block. But this is a very traditional log cabin block. Let me hold this for you. Oh. Can I touch this? Actually, you can. Fine, I get to touch a quilt. <laughs> we have touch pieces here at the museum so people can get up close and personal with the different techniques. So they can't touch our regular quilts, but they can definitely touch the touch pieces. But this is a traditional log cabin block where you have a center square and then strips surrounding the center square. And they're usually arranged so you have light strips on two adjacent sides and dark strips on two other adjacent sides. And if you look at Lonnie's, she doesn't... She has log cabin blocks, but she doesn't pay attention to that configuration. So her cabins are completely new cabins off in the cosmos somewhere, computer chips and all. Well, what an odd combination of uh, cabins and computer boards oh, yeah. floating in space. So as we said many times, it's not your grandmother's quilt. This is uh, really an artistic expression. It's a wall quilt. It's not a bed quilt. Well, this so. is really high tech. If it just lit up, that would just cap it off. Oh. <laughs> oh, there's a concept. Maybe we need to look into that. But I think she's got enough glistening things on her quilt. She has a few metallic pieces of fabric and some metallic thread. And uh, those computer chips really kind of glisten, too. Well, it sure does. This is the most glistening quilt we've seen yet. Oh, and we have others. We should check some other quilts out. Let's do that. Okay. Randy, this quilt is entitled Spice of Life. It's by Linda Roy. And it has a little bit of glisten to it in a very small area. Oh, yeah, I can see that. She has metallic thread in this small grid. And this is really a tour de force of technique. She has ruching, which is where a strip of fabric is basted, and then you draw the basting thread up, and it gathers the fabric up, and it's arranged just like the center of a flower. It so makes she, a three-dimensional form as right. well with texture. Oh, very much so. A lot of surface interest. And she has couch threads in these scallops. That's where a, a thread, a yarn, is laid on the surface, and other thinner threads loop over it to, show, to hold it to the surface. She has applique, lovely applique. She used, Linda has used stippling, and that's very, very close together quilting that really flattens an area. She has some trapunto stuffed work in these petals. It's kind of hard to tell. Um, and this section, the border of all these blocks, is cathedral window. There's three layers here, and they're tacked at intervals. The two top ones are tacked at intervals, and then those are spread open and appliqued down. So it's like you're looking through these little cathedral windows into the fabric underneath. Beautiful. And it's really a lovely quilt, spice, and if you look at it, it's very spicy colors. This looks more like the traditional quilts that I think of. When I think of the word quilt, you know, like grandmother's quilt is what comes to mind. So this, this seems to fit with that traditional idea as compared to some of the quilts that we've seen earlier today. So and this, this does fall within, uh, as we think of it, the classical quilt format. And it's a block format where you have individual blocks. And the block format quilt really came to, the, um, came to be popular in the mid-1800s. So this one is uh, won Best of Show, the Hancock's Best of Show Award in 2004. Um, and that's 
it was just a, it's a wonderful quilt. Wonderful now, where does the uh, how much money, if I may ask, a uh, quilt can get for the best in show? Best of show is a twenty thousand dollar purchase wow. award. Wow! And we're very very pleased that Hancock's provides that. Um, if you think about it, though, because a lot of people go twenty thousand dollars for a quilt. If you think about it, a quilt such as this, with all this handwork and all these details. Each edge of all this applique has to be stitched by hand. They probably have 20,000, 20, or not 20,000, but 2,000 hours in the making of this quilt. That's, if you're a full-time employed person working 40 hours a week for 50 weeks a year, that's 2,080 hours. So it basically boils down to about $10 an hour. Incredible. That's not even thinking about the expenses of materials. Oh, you know, right. Going into it. And the love that goes into these quilts. And all the time. So how long would it take for a quilt like this to be made? It would, it would probably be around 2,000 hours. 2,000 hours. So, I mean, drawn out over like a year? Um, a year. Some, quilt, some of the quilters have taken as long as four years to create their quilts. So do most of the quilters, do they have assistants or is just one person working on one quilt? I would say most of them are working by themselves. Wow, that's but, just incredible to think about the time that goes in to yeah. creating these. It's, it's an incredible amount of time. It's a labor of love. Um, one of the things, too, I'd like to mention about the Purchase Award is it really does elevate the art of quilting. And the art of quilting is considered traditionally women's work. Mm -hmm. So it elevates the whole attitude towards women's work. Well, certainly, it makes a, it, it has quilting up into an art form like uh, like because we think in more of a museum quality when we have that kind oh, of absolutely. prize money out and with the attention that we've uh, got from uh, from uh, the, all over the world on the quilting museum. I mean, this is really taking it to a really high art form. Well, and that's why people come here because we have the best of show award winners here and the the level of artistry and technique in all the quilts here in the museum whether they are by hand or by machine is totally exceptional if you're a quilter it's really a mini course in in technique and in artistry if you're a painter mm -hmm. you can learn something from our quilts if you're a graphic artist or if you're just someone that wants to look at something beautiful so there's everyone can connect because everybody sleeps under a quilt typically. So it's, it's a very accessible art form. That's true. I think we might have time for one more quilt. Oh good. Then let's we, go check one let's more. Let's go check one more. Great. Randy, each year the Quilt Museum runs a contest called New Quilts from an Old Favorite. Mm -hmm. And this contest involves selecting a block, a traditional block, like the log cabin block that we saw earlier right. in Cabins in the Cosmos. And the quilters are encouraged to just run wild with it. It's a juried and judged uh, competition. The top 18 quilts come to the museum to form an exhibit that later travels for mm -hmm. two years. And the quilt behind us is this year's first prize winner, Can You Feel the Spirit by Kathy Pil Pilcher Sperry. And tell me what you see about this. Well, the first thing that catches my eye is I see a, a one-point perspective. I'm always talking about space to uh, my students. And what I see is I, I feel like, for one, I feel like I'm looking through a window because of these circled blocks here, which I see in a lot of historic homes for window casings. Oh, yes. So I feel like I'm looking through a window. Uh, the other thing is I see this one-point perspective where the vanishing point for all these tiles is uh, dead center in the quilt. So I do see a sense of at least linear perspective. Linear perspective. Piece. And the, the Dresden plate forms in this quilt are the pink block here, the green block here, and the turquoise block here. And the Dresden plate block is a traditional block that has blades. If you think about it, it looks kind of like two fans put together. Mm -hmm. And it has a little circle in the middle. And Kathy's really kind of run wild with this. There's not a lot of Dresden plates in the, in the quilt, but the ones that are here are very, very contemporary. And we see that she's really gone you know, wild with her colors, and she has uh, flying geese units that fly through the quilt and just keep flying through. She did a little bit of glisten. There's some embellishment with little tiny seed beads, and up on the corners, there's a little bit of ribbon. Th those are done with beads. Those aren't the thread painting that we talked about earlier, but those uh, add a little bit of glisten. But it's a contest we run every year, and the quilts are always a lot of fun. Well, this looks like a lot of fun. I mean, compared to the last quilt we saw, which was more traditional mm -hmm. quilt, um, 
I mean, this one has a certain flair to it. And I say that with some of the patterns being used, like these little spiral forms, and uh, this twisting and turning that's going on within Not the... The, I mean, I want to call it a painting. It's a quilt, but I guess it could be viewed as a painting as well. It's right. certainly approached that way. And uh, I find it interesting also is the framing device that we're talking about the perspective, but it's also a framing device for this image. Uh, it's very beautiful. There's, there's two ways to think about it. There's the tradi what we can think of as traditional quilts, mm -hmm. or you can think of them as classical quilts. And then you have the innovative quilts or the contemporary art quilts. And there's room for both kinds in quilting, and the museum has both kinds. And that's, wow. that's great, because we have a little bit of something to offer all quilt lovers. Well, this is beautiful. And you said there's 18 in this series? In this, in this exhibit, yes. And they're from all over the United States. And there's actually two sisters in this year's exhibit. So two sisters entered quilts, and, and they are in the exhibit. Do you get much family entries? No, not usually. These two sisters are just really, you know, really, really into quilting. And I think it's that the whole family of, uh, is into quilting. Now, we were talking earlier about um, quilting being elevated to where it's, uh, where it's not just your grandmother's quilt, and it's not just women making quilts, but more men are making quilts as oh, well. Yes. Oh, yes. And this uh, next summer in 2007, we will have an exhibit called Four Guys in Their Quilts. And it'll be an exhibit of just quilts by four gentlemen. Wow, I can't wait to see that. That'll I'm sure we'll be back to do another show on oh, that. Oh, that'll be fun. Thanks for joining us for our show, Eye on Arts Today. We'll see you the next time. And that concludes today's broadcast. 